Hi, Trevor here, reflecting on live through music. Thank you for stopping by. Well, we're continuing on with this two-part mini-series on iconic entertainer Elton John. Last time we looked at the fact that his music, the fact that he sold 300 million albums, there's about 31 albums throughout there, and all, and just the, the incredible success and talent this guy actually is. I thought today we'd have a little, little bit more look at some of the accolades that this guy has received. And so here we go. So not in any particular order, by the way, I just thought I'd just uh, call him out. So in 1992, he was inducted in, together with his mate Bernie Taupin into the Songwriting Hall of Fame. He's a fellow of the British Academy of Songwriters. Uh, and and uh, back in the 1980s, uh, together with Gladys Knight and Stevie Wonder, and uh, Dan Warwick, out came the song That's What Friends Are For, that uh, funded AIDS research. And of course, uh, on John has been quite prominent in, in AIDS research. Uh, three Grammy Awards for that particular song. He was nominated, he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1994. Now, what is significant about this induction, the, the first year that Elton John was eligible, given that he started his career you know, back in the late 1960s, uh, that's pretty significant to be inducted in the first year of eligibility for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Of course, there has been contention in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Some people have to wait a while to get into it. Well, Elton John was, was in it the first year. Uh, very significant awards in, uh, in uh, the British Empire as well. Commander of the Order of the British Empire, CBE in 1995. And then he was also made a member of the Companions of Honour in 1998, which is a step above that one. He was knighted by Queen Elizabeth II in 1998, which made him Sir Elton John. Now, all the way back in 1975, he, was, he received the star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He was the 1,662nd person, apparently, to actually get that honour. So we're talking the Atlantic, we're talking about the United States and Great Britain here with significant awards. He has received a Life Singer's Lifetime Achievement Award. He was honoured by the United States in 2004 at the Kennedy Centre. That's a pretty high honour indeed, that one. People like Led Zeppelin and uh, and Billy Joel and Disney and a few other people have been acknowledged um, by that centre. That's a very significant award. Significant award that one. 2006, the Disney Corporation made him a legend. Uh, th th uh, France has actually given him the Medal de Honor, which goes all the way back to Napoleon Bonaparte. So that's a very significant award that one. Uh, he's received two Academy Awards, two Golden Globes, six Grammy Awards, and a Tony Award because Elton John, although he does write and record um, on albums, he also has been involved in musicals as well. Uh, obviously, The Lion King being being a movie that became a stage show, plus many others. Uh, many ASCAP Awards, Ivor Novello Awards and Brit Awards. So there's just to name a few. Uh, very, very well thought of both by fans and also by the industry itself and also by greater than that. Think about France with their award, the United States with their award and the United Kingdom with their awards. This guy's absolutely up there as very significant indeed. And just going back to the audience for a second here, um, you don't go to an Elton John concert, you go to an Elton John experience. He is all about his fans. He's all about giving the best show and the best performance absolutely possible. And when you've got, I suppose, got the resources to be able to put behind concerts, you can certainly give back to your audiences. And he certainly has done that through his songs, through his stage presence, and just through just the way he is. As I said to you last time, um, he has uh, fought with his inner demons and he's come out as a well-rounded individual and victorious in his life. Now, as I did uh, last time with four songs, we had slow, medium, fast and iconic <laughs> with his songs. I'm going to do the same here today. 
So let's start off with slow. And now when I thought of slow, I immediately went to that day, the 6th of September, 1997, in Westminster Abbey, when they laid Lady Diana to rest. I still remember that day. I remember the, the day it was announced that she had she had been killed. And um, and I thought, oh, well, and the world, well, the world, whole world just paused at that point because she was such a significant character in the world. She wasn't scared to be herself. Of course, she had a start with the royal family. But she went out on her own and she certainly made a mark in the world while she was around. Well, unfortunately, she got killed in a road crash in Paris. And so who did they get to sing a song at her funeral? Sir Elton John. And uh, it was Bernie Taupin who rewrote the words to Candle in the Wind. Now, of course, Candle in the Wind was all about Marilyn Monroe, Goodbye Norma Jean, and very much taken from the, from, from the perspective of someone sitting in the audience watching one of her movies and just the sadness and loneliness that Marilyn Monroe felt. And so there was a bit of a parallel here with Lady Diana. And so what they did is they rewrote the words Candle in the Wind to Goodbye English Rose. And so we've got a, we've got that particular performance for you. This this was a massive uh, single for Elton John, and I think he ended up donating it to charity, which is what you kind of do in this situation. Uh, Candle in the Wind, Wind originally came off the iconic Goodbye Yellow Brick Road album in the 1970s, and that sold 30 million copies in its own right. So it was a very, very significant album for Elton John. Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, of course, is a song. Funeral for a Friend is also on that album, so a very iconic album for him indeed. We then got, now, so I went to Medium. Well, you've got to go for the song Rocket Man, I'm thinking. This is probably the first Elton John song I ever heard. I remember having a compilation cassette, as they were back then, and Rocket Man was, I thought, well, this song's pretty cool. This guy could play the piano. I can sing pretty well. Um, this uh, this came off the Honky Chateau album, which was a number one um, seller in the US and sort of ushered in a whole string of number ones for Elton John, really. And I think it was Rolling Stone, I think, that put this album number 357 of the top 500 albums of all time. Now, Rocket Man's a, is a really good lyrics in this song. It's all about, you think, well, it's actually not about, um, you know, a guy going away. This is about a guy who's feeling terribly lonely, looking for love, and he feels like a little bit like he's actually um, not in this world at all. He's been forgotten and ignored. One of the lines, Mars ain't the place to try and raise your kids. In fact, it's cold as hell. That gives you a bit of an example of where we're going here. But instead of just saying I'm lonely and life sucks and life's over as we know it, what he actually says is I'm gonna I kind of feel a little bit like a guy out in space all on my own. And so um it's gonna be a long, long time and um, zero hour, nine AM, all of that stuff. This is a fantastic song by Elton John. One of his classics, one is one of his classic ones really, and such good lyrics. I think we need to give credence to Bernie Tolman here for writing absolutely stunning lyrics here and writing them in a way that might, were a bit mysterious and got us to think. So, um, 1972, um, this is a live version of Rocket Man. I think we're going to run right back to kind of the early 70s here with this particular performance as well. So Elton John was starting to get his songwriting credence on at this point and he was starting to get a bit of a following. Then we go, so we go to Quick. Now, for Quick, I thought, well, let's go with I'm Still Standing. Uh, this came off the Too Low for Zero album in 1983. Um, things have been a little bit quiet for Elton John around this point, and this album came out and pretty much re-catapulted him into superstardom. I'm Still Standing was just declaration to the world that, hey, guys, I'm, despite everything that's been going on, because quite a bit has been going on for him, really, um, he he's still standing, he's still going strong, and he's still making music. So this is a declaration to the world in not only the way that Elton John can, that I'm still going and I'm still here. And so and I'm so I'm I'm standing up because I want to be noticed. Um of course there was an iconic video clip to this one. Um uh, this this uh, video clip, I actually haven't got the live, the official clip here. I've got a live clip, but the the official clip featured in the Rocket Man movie, and it's pretty much exactly the same as the original. But when when you look for absolute passion, 
and the brilliance of Elton John, I had to go to this live performance from the Prince's Trust Rock Gala. Um, this is an all-star kind of uh, gig, and we've got Phil Collins on drums. I noticed, and I think I can see Eric Clapt Clapton in there doing the lot, doing the lead guitar solo, and Midge Ewer from Ultravox and Visage is there as well. So a bit of an all-star event, this one. And Elton John really, really steps things up here. This is an incredible performance by him. Just watch his hands on the piano and how good this guy is at playing. Now, the really, really quiet stuff, as he did in um, uh, Cavill in the Wind and your song from last time, to this absolute pumping out song, it does not get much, much better than this. And this is Elton John giving everything he can in this stunning performance. So I'm still standing. It's a great little challenge to the world for all of us here. And that is, are you still standing? Are you still going strong? Are you still giving everything you possibly can to the world? Because um, if you're not, the world's kind of missing out. And I think that's what Elton John was thinking here. Um, then we've got, well, then we go to Iconic. And the song I had to go here was Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. Oh my goodness, this song is absolutely staggeringly good. This one came off the album Caribou from 1974. And, it, and this song really works when you've got the band doing what they do so well. The drumming in this is pretty good, by the way. Uh, when you've got an orchestra and a choir and everything else, just really making the sound absolutely massive. Of course, when you're Elton John, you can do this. And it, and that's what we've got here. We've got a live performance. It's a little bit older here, but he can still pump out the music. He still plays his notes note perfect on the piano. Whenever he puts his finger on his note, he knows exactly where it's going. He hardly has to actually have to look at the keyboard when he plays. He just knows where his fingers are going. And when you're backed by incre the incredible band that he's got, and also a, a, an orchestra, and also a choir, what more can we say? You're in for an absolute ride. And um, Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, which of course he did as a duet with with um, George Michael a little while back as well. That was a pretty, if you want to look that one up, that one's pretty cool as well, actually. Um, this is just one of those songs where he just pulled out all the stops. Well, Bernie Taupin's lyrics, what we can say again, they're fantastic lyrics. And when he got this music going for this one, um, it, it's an absolutely iconic song, this one. You know, these are this is one of the songs that you want Elton John to play when you go and see him, see him perform. And, you know, he does not disappoint. This, the band has been doing this song for so long now that they exactly know how to bring out everything that this song is. As Elton John gives everything in his piano and his vocals on this one as well. So we've got one, that one. That's from the Royal Opera House. So we've got Quiet, um, Goodbye English Rose, or A Candle in the Wind. We, from Medium, we've got Rocket Man, uh, Fast, I'm Still Standing. And iconic, don't let the sun go down on me. Now, uh, as I bring Elton John's story to a bit of a close here today, first of all, if there are any of the Elton John team watching or any of the Bernie, Bernie Taupin team watching, hey guys, these guys are amazing for what you brought to this world. What an incredible gift Elton John has been to this world. What an incredible gift Bernie Taupin's lyrics have been to this world. And we, the world is just, just such a better place because you've all been part of it. Now, I know it takes many people to, to keep Elton John of this calibre going. And so all of you, whoever you have been, thank you for what you've brought to this world. And it's a real privilege to be able to talk about Elton John over the last two videos that I have done. So thank you for that. And to Elton... Um, man, you're just, you're just a genius. What can I say? I'd love to be able to play the piano as well as you can. I'd love to have your voice. I would love to be able to remember the music like you do. You're an absolute legend. And thank you for being yourself. I think the challenge to all of us today is let's be ourselves. Because you know what? The world resonates when people are themselves. So the links to all four videos are in the description below. That's where you'll always find my links. So um, if this is your first time, the Life Reflections through Music, or if you've come back for another one, thank you to everybody and welcome to everyone. And thank you for your engagement. Again, it's always great to get the engagement. 
and thank you for sticking with me in this little mini series on the iconic Elton John. Well, that's it for today. Next time we're going to go back to another legend, a little bit earlier than Elton John, and that is Chuck Berry, but of course he was around for quite a while. So until then, I'll catch you around. Bye for now.